Hello my friends and welcome to Open Studio D. I'm Vlad Duchev and today in this episode we will have a three or the three small tiny episodes in a small big episode. Can I say that? Maybe yes, maybe not, but subject number one. Uh, as you remember, last time we, uh, we were working on this uh, painting or two paintings, uh, which is just one uh, canvas and two paintings. Uh, we were painting the same time, or I was painting at the same time, one in acrylic, one in oil. And today I'm gonna actually disclose, <laughs> open the gate, open the curtain, <laughs> if you will. Uh, which one is acrylic, which one is um, which one is oil. So this will be part number one. Part number two will be actually I have I have this a painting. This is underpainting, which is done in acrylic. And I will show you how to use acrylic as underpainting um, for the future you know coats, the final coats of oil. So basically we'll put oil on top of acrylic. So this is acrylic right behind me. This is acrylic underpainting, which is looks like, you know, I even sign, if you can see on the left corner, there is my signature. And uh, this is acrylic. And I, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna use this as my underpainting, and I'm going, going to apply oil on top of acrylic. So this will be probably good you know, good exercise, and I'm really, I'm really enjoying working with uh, acrylic right now as my underpainting because I'm treating it as my, uh, kind of as a painting, as a study work, maybe close to more study work, and then finally when it's dry, I can work as a final coat, put a final coat of oil, and build, you know, build up whatever I need, and I will show you the, you know, the benefits and the beauty of it. So this will be part number two, and finally. Item number three will be using acrylic as, uh, as the underpainting. So we're gonna use canvas right behind my shoulders, right there, eight by 10, Gesso Prime, very good for acrylic. And we're gonna use acrylic as our underpainting. And what we're going to paint is this scenery. Uh, this photograph I took in, at Bass County plein air competition about months and a half ago, or almost two months ago, uh, fresh in the memory. And we're gonna use this photograph as our reference uh, photo to do underpainting. And I'll show you how to use acrylic um, as underpainting, all right? So this episode will be a little bit longer than usual because we're covering three pieces, three items, or three subjects to talk, all right? But stay tuned because it's, I think it's very interesting and I hope you will enjoy it. So let's get started. Here we go! All right, as I mentioned, part number one is where is oil and where is acrylic? <laughs> so many of you actually guessed it wrong. And, you know, I'm sorry, but it was wrong. Everybody said, majority of people said that this is oil and this is acrylic. In reality, it's actually opposite. A is acrylic, B is oil. <laughs> And to be honest, I'm looking right now at this painting or two paintings. I can see the difference. Uh, it's just a little bit flatter. Uh, and I'm looking at, if you, let me show you, if you're looking at this, you probably will see some, uh, some brush strokes uh, right here, right here, and right here. You know, I'm not sure if you see it or not. Uh, it looks like oil. And this, uh, looks more like acrylic uh, because it's more flatter um, and the colors actually the hue of the colors more I like more hues on on acrylic than oil for some reason I'm not sure why but this is the this is the disclosure or you know this is a moment of truth <laughs> this is acrylic this is oil and to be honest when I was painting both uh, I was surprised because it just feels the same. It, it's looked the same, almost the same. The only one thing that I was uh, kind of noticed in my mind uh, or realizing when I was dipping into acrylic, the acrylic was kind of, you know, gooey stuff. Like it's pooling. Uh, it's not like you're scooping the oil, uh, you, you're dipping into it. 
other than that, uh, and, and another thing is instead of, you know, putting my uh, brush to clean into terpenoid, I was dipping into water. That's it. So I really like working with acrylic right now. I'm, am I going to switch to completely to acrylic? No, absolutely not. I'm oil painter. I really enjoy, you know, uh, the... Um, somewhere in the back of my mind there's this dangerous and you know there's heavy metal inside and you cannot touch it and of course not i'm not going to enjoy this but uh the the look of the oil the process of painting with oil is is a little bit different than, than acrylic maybe to some point i actually i have to admit i actually order a heavy body acrylic and i want to try it because some people you know some some people are claiming that it looks and it feels like oil. If that's the case, maybe. But even just going, uh, even going through colors of acrylic and comparing to comparing to colors in oil, I didn't find same you know selection or same colors that I'm that I'm using. So there is already kind of limitation. So, but other than that, I'm pretty sure. Um, they will come up with more colors, more colors, and more colors, and um, I think oil eventually will. Of course, it's gonna stay. What I'm talking about, of course, it's gonna stay. It's oil. It's a art of oil. Uh, but acrylic will, you know, will 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 make um, its own noise of standalone uh, medium like a watercolor, like everything else. So, this is part number one. This is acrylic. This is oil, guys. Sorry, there are only two people who, actually three people, that uh, put their voice uh, as this acrylic and this oil. All right. So those three people, congratulations. And right now we move to part number two, which is oil on top of acrylic. As you can see right behind me, this painting is done in acrylic, and. Um, I was trying, what I was trying to do is to actually paint this study work. Um, I was actually painting as a study work, not as my underpainting. I have to admit it. I was painting, I was you know, messing around, but somewhere in my mind I was thinking about what if I just treat it as my study work, but I will use it as my underpainting. Uh, somewhere in the line, uh, when I was, you know, you know, getting close to the finish, finish line, I decided to, I'm not sure why I decided to sign and I put my signature. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, but today, what we're gonna do, we are going to put oil on top of this. And the beauty of um, using this way, and you may say, or ask what way, uh, using acrylic and study work, not just as underpainting. I mean, this will be underpainting. This will be under, you know, this will be our under. We're gonna treat it as our underpainting. But when you work on the underpainting, treat it as a study. So it's not just you know bold brush work with just shapes and values and try to get the colors. No, you treating it as your study work. So you're studying the shapes. You're studying everything. So you're studying the shapes, all shapes. You're studying the, you know, your uh, composition, everything. You're treating this as a final painting, knowing that this is underpainting. So when this is done, and if this is completely dry. And to be honest, when I look this morning uh, against the light to see the reflection, it's actually very shiny. Very flat, but very, I mean, flat surface voice, but very shiny. So I just wonder how will, you know, how oil will receive or how acrylic will receive the oil on top and, you know, what, you know, the brush strokes and everything. How is it gonna, I'm just, uh, I wanna try it. <laughs> and also, uh, another thing is because I already tried, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I already tried on another study um, and uh, the results was result was really good. I, I really like the results, uh, result of it. And uh, uh, what I like in this, treating this as my underpainting, but working as my study, um, more like complete painting, uh, when I'm gonna put final codes, I actually do I need to look at the uh, 
photograph? No. Everything is done right here already. Uh, everything is done on this painting already. Everything. The values, the colors, everything. Maybe not exact, exactly what I want, but right now I can use this as my study work, as my photograph, as a reference, as everything else. All I have to do just see if I want to change the color. Uh, I may paint with transparent colors to, to make sure the acrylic will shine through. I use that combination of the colors, so this is you know this is a benefit, huge benefit. Also, I can you know I can lift some parts open, not even touching, uh, and oil with acrylic will work together. So there is a many 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 uh, uh, kind of benefits to it. All right. So again, less talking and more painting. So let's jump on the canvas and see what we're gonna pull. All right, I'm going to use uh, only gel uh, for this on top of this painting and uh, all my colors in oil. So we're going on top of the acrylic. So let's get started.
this is always part two. I mean, part two took a little bit longer than we expected. All right, and part number three is uh, underpainting. Using acrylic, um, acrylic as, as underpainting for your oil paint, paint. So, so acrylic goes first as an underpainting and then, um, then you can apply oil on top as your final coat. And before we jump on the canvas uh, doing the underpainting in acrylic, I just wanna summarize, uh, kind of summarize the acrylic, all right? I'm using the acrylic for, what, months and a half already? And I'm really pleased with the uh, results. And I kind of came up with the benefits or pros and cons or benefits of using acrylic. I'm oil painter and I'm not going to switch completely to even though I think um, what I, you know, my analysis is telling me that acrylic has its own path. Uh, oil is already on, you know, has its own path or road or a highway. Uh, but acrylic will be will be uh, competing. Maybe some you know some artists will switch to acrylic. Some artists already switched to acrylic. I think it's a great medium to use, um, 100%. And I will tell you why. Uh, there is several benefits or several several pros to acrylic. So uh, let's talk about you know benefits. Benefit number one is just safe. Um, Acrylic is just safe. I remember painting with uh, Jeremy Sams uh, at Bath County plein air competition, and um, he was showing, you know, how he's using. Because I asked him how he's using the uh, acrylic, and he was showing the painting. And actually, he was painting the piece for uh, final delivery, just a small piece. And when when we finish, I was recording him. And when we finish, he actually took the jug of. Uh, water that he was cleaning the brush and he basically dipped it into the river. He actually was staying in the river painting the scenery and he just discharged everything into the river. And I asked him like, whoa, what are you doing? And uh, basically he said, oh, it's safe because the molecules of acrylic, especially open acrylic is or are uh, encapsulated into uh, kind of uh, coat, I'm not coat, but it's just encapsulated inside the something, I don't know, I'm not a chemist. Uh, so you can basically discharge it anywhere. He actually said you can drink this water, I won't recommend doing this, but uh, what thought, what crossed my mind, uh, every time I clean my brushes I have to discharge everything into you know bottle and then there is a whole process of discharging uh, anything with oil, right? So please don't discharge it into your uh, utility sink because you know eventually later on you will be drinking that water and you will be poisoning yourself. Uh, of course, the water will go through some process of cleaning. Um, you know your local uh, filtration system, whatever. But it's gonna come back to you. Um, so. So there's a benefit. It's just safe. You can you, you can get it on your uh, skin. Uh, it's not dangerous, basically. Uh, it's just encapsulated. And if you want to you know, dive into it and just maybe study, do research, please do it. Uh, but I, I did my uh, diligence, and I find out that it's just very very safe. So that's number one. Just especially for the people, artists. I know some artists that develop allergy uh, for turp or for oil, and they just there is no way they can use oil. So that's benefit number one. Just safe, safe, very safe uh, medium. Benefit number two, it's very easy to travel, especially for plein air. You don't have to uh, get special or ship if you you know using medium. For example, my medium two, I cannot take it to the plane. I have to actually ship it. Uh, no plane will take you know uh, take me with my luggage with this medium. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe because it's flammable. I'm not sure. So it's just much much safer to travel and easy to travel and just convenient. You didn't have to. I remember uh, true story. I went to competition and I forgot my medium. And instead of uh, instead of searching and browsing or scouting location, I spent literally two days trying to get materials because we were in the middle of nowhere. I tried to get materials and mix my medium. So, uh, using acrylic, especially this acrylic, all I have to do go to, you know, kitchen, you know, 
take or not even the kitchen go to a clothes convenience store and just get a bottle of water that's it or a gallon of water that's it you can drink that water or you can use that water for you know um, cooling yourself and you can use it as a media so it's just convenient very very convenient so that will be benefit number two uh, benefit number three it's a fast drying uh, fast drying medium so if you love to work on coats which I do uh, you know I, I love to take you know my underpainting then let it dry fixed what I call it and then put another coat and then let it fixed and then put another coat that's the way I, I'm painting I don't paint a la prima even though I paint a la prima it, but it's that's the reason I'm using my medium too so I have this you know the last coat is fixed what I call it fixing it's just getting that cover I mean the uh, I don't know what to call it but the layer is getting really, really it's fixing it's not dry it's fixing so I can put the next strokes of brush strokes and not lifting up the uh, previous coat so uh, fast drying that's really good um, I, I, I love acrylic for that um, not this uh, we'll talk about this later <laughs> I think this is set, uh, it's market, uh, marketed as a slow drying and I think it's very, very slow. <laughs> I would love to have uh, something really, much, I mean, not really, but much, much faster. Um, by the way, they, um, Golden sells this uh, open acrylic, uh, it's called open acrylic medium glows. Slow uh, process, drying process, even more. And I tried it as actually, I tried painting without this and it's just, you know, you have to wait uh, longer than I was expect, expected. And this will even actually push it even more. But they also sell the same uh, gloss uh, medium, but fast drying. So I could actually order one uh, can so I can use it um, because I think, not I think, I need it a little bit faster. When I put it under painting, I want to jump right away. So that's um, that's a benefit. Um, another benefit is um, just from you know cost effectiveness. Uh, this uh, acrylic, I mean this canvas right right here, which we'll be doing underpainting. I will show the underpainting is gesso uh, gesso primed, which is twice uh, less cost for the same canvas I will buy for oil prime linen. Uh, for example, this is like you know two, three, three dollars uh, versus uh, eight dollars for um, oil prime. So it's just less expensive. You can you know you can spend more money on painting. You know, I mean, buying oil uh, or tubes or brushes or something else. So it's always good. Uh, and that's that's you know that's the benefit. I think there is much much more benefits to this. Um, so yesterday I was painting and I got the paint, my brush fell from my, my hands and uh, this actually was covered with, with acrylic. What I did, I just went to later on when it was actually already kind of start drying. I went to utility and just wash it and look, it's, it's clean. That's another benefit. So I, I, <laughs> some people like, some artists, I have some art, I'm not gonna, you know, uh, put the names, but there's uh, some artists they love to be covered with uh, paint. Uh, I have one lady, um, <laughs> I, have to, I have to zip it, uh, but she just every time we paint together uh, on the competition, she is covered with you know, with and she paints in oil actually, not in acrylic. She covered, I mean, her face is covered, you know, hands, uh, pants, everything, shirt, everything. Um, I love painting clean. Uh, I, I can actually paint with my suit on uh, and not get you know a paint but this is a benefit all right and there are so many many other benefits to it just you know shoot me in this put in the description shoot a message what else do you think acrylic is you know more beneficial um, but main thing I think main benefits are more um, safe for environment uh, and that's why acrylic is very developing I think that's the main main reason why it's developing now, uh, this is pros. What about cones? Uh, cones, the when everything is drying, it's drying a little bit flat and value, half value down. So you have to kind of watch it. Pain in high values. So because the value is gonna drop, number one. Uh, number two, the colors, uh, the selection of the colors is not really, I wouldn't say great. 
I was trying to find the same colors uh, which I use in oil and I couldn't find. I have to find some replacement for it. Uh, so oil is much, much more. For people who you know paints in, in primary colors, it's a, it, you know it's a great. Um, uh, I'm actually you know I can paint I can paint in the primary colors. It's not a, you know not a problem, but I'm, I'm a fast painter. I don't like spending you know hours you know mixing colors and trying to get the colors. So if I see something I, I can grab already pre-mixed, I will grab it and put it in my you know my palette and grab it and start using it. My 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 attention is to the canvas, not to the palette, to some degree. Uh, so this is a this is a con just selection limited selection of the uh, just colors. Um, again, this is the, for the people who love to use different different colors. Uh, another thing, this is I'm not sure this is uh, con or neg negativity of the acrylic. Uh, if you forgot, like uh, I'm oil painter, I can put my brush. If I'm using it for dark, let's say for oil, I can put it right next to, on on my palette or next to the palette and forget about it for to the end of the painting and then grab it and go wash it. With acrylic it's a little bit different. If you forgot to wash your brush, forget about it. Just throw it away. You won't be able to. If it starts, you know, drying, that's it. That brush is done. You have to throw it away. Uh, and that's how to learn it the hard way. <laughs> and on and on and on. There is a pros and cons, pros and cons. If you compare oil and acrylic it will be like like this. Um, I'm an oil painter. I'm gonna stick to to oil because oil it has a you know legacy. Um, acrylic is developing. Uh, I'm not saying the acrylic is not going to develop. It's gonna develop to probably to the level of oil. There will be you know painters artists switching to to acrylic 100%. Um, but you know oil is not going anywhere. Uh, there is already you know I know uh, Utrecht. I think Utrecht, Utrecht, I don't know how to pronounce it right. They already developed self cadmium free paint, and I'm actually using several tubes of it, uh, and it's it's great, and it's not dangerous. I'm pretty sure we will we'll come up with some molecule. I mean, the formulas how to encapsulate even those oil uh, molecules into safe environment uh, and in you know, a better medium uh, or water mixable oils already there. Um, it feels a little bit different, but you know, it's there. So it's developing. So um, what medium to choose? It's up to you. Uh, oil or uh, acrylic or some, something else. I love gouache. Maybe we'll, we'll do gouache uh, studies. All right, uh, too much talking, I think, right? <laughs> so let's, let's jump on, um, let's jump on actually underpaintings. Uh, and talk about underpainting. How to do underpainting in acrylic? Uh, same way you're doing in, uh, or you do it in oil with uh, medium two. How I do it, it's absolutely the same way. Uh, the only thing is you didn't have to. If you're using a medium two oil underpainting, using the same colors, using everything the same, just using M2 uh, medium uh, for underpainting. Uh, that's it. With acrylic, you have to use different palettes. You have to have two palettes. One palette with acrylic, and then you have to close it, clean the brushes, put it away, you know, wait for acrylic to dry, and then switch to switch to oil. But the process of underpainting is the same. So you can watch this. This will be very simple, um, you know, demo how to use as an underpainting in acrylic. Results. Actually, the result is the absolutely same as doing oil. Uh, it just, as I mentioned, all those benefits just safe, easier to clean the brush, and on and on and on and on. Okay, uh, but the pro process is absolutely same. The reason I'm showing this because I promised to show you. Okay, so this is the scenery that we're going to do a um, a demo. Uh, this is from uh, Virginia, from Bass County. Uh, this was actually the scenery that I was thinking painting for competition, but uh, I decided to paint something else, and I just found this image that this I, I thought you know this would be a good idea to show you how to do underpainting for this. All right, so let's jump on the canvas and um, do un our underpainting. As I mentioned, you have we will be doing it in in acrylic, <laughs> and here's. Here is the palette for uh, my 
acrylic uh, paint. So we're gonna use this. And this is the canvas that we're gonna use for this eight by 10, which I normally don't use. I don't like using eight by 10, the minimum. I use six by eight, it's, it's the smallest for studies. And then the, the smallest, uh, for paint, I use the, probably the smallest I will use 9 by 12, but it's, it's the smallest or something larger. But today is the um, demo, just the demo. So let's jump on the canvas and do this scenery on this canvas. Also, I have a scenery, the same scenery that I have right here on my iPad. I have it right here on my phone. This is another thing that I would strongly recommend. Uh, instead of using the monitor, a big monitor, or a computer or even iPad. Uh, sometimes it's really good to switch to something small, uh, something like iPhone. Uh, the reason why, uh, for example, I'm looking right now at the iPad, it's, which is right here, right next to me, uh, away from the canvas, and then right here on this. On my iPad, I see more details, much, much more details that I need. Uh, on my iPhone, I see just the shapes, and for especially for Andre painting, this is the most important: just the shapes, colors, and values. So that's why painting from you know uh, from your phone is highly, highly recommended if you're painting in the studio, right? I took this photograph. I always preach. You remember, I always preach: uh, paint only from photograph that you took. You, I was standing there on the, at this scenery. I was staring at this, you know, mountain and tree and the uh, uh, vineyard. I, I remember everything, to be honest. This was a, a, actually a very, very cold morning. <laughs> uh, last day uh, of competition, I was thinking about painting small, small painting uh, of this of this scenery. But as I mentioned, if I look right here on my iPad, I see a lot of details. If I look right here in my phone, uh, I see just shapes. I don't see whole thing. I didn't see a lot of things. All right, so let's jump on the canvas and do underpainting.
So now I'm gonna look at the main shapes, make sure my shapes are same with this shapes, with no details, okay? Um, a little bit different, right? Uh, here's a tree that goes over the mountains, uh, the shadows, it's more organized. Now, keep in mind, this is the, you're right, underpainting. My tree looks like lollipop because I'm not going to, you know, over the sky right now, simply because I will do it later on. This is my underpainting. This is colors that I'm going to use uh, that will go through, shine through my oil. And uh, that's, that's the reason uh, to do this underpainting. So basically this is the same underpainting I will do for um, in oil. I will do the same thing. You saw me, um, oops, you saw me when I, I was doing my underpainting, I will do even this. Uh, I would just smooth everything with my uh, fan brush, um, my fan brush. But lately, uh, I'm not doing this uh, because I just like the, what I will do if I, if I see some heavy layers of acrylic, I will just, I will just remove it. Uh, that's the only thing because this is my underpainting. I don't want any buildups. Um, so I'm, I'm actually, actually, I may do this even because this will be my grass. So I can do this, remove this. Maybe tree, because I have to use it later on. I'm just breaking the hard edges, even right here. Let me clean my brush. I don't want any more moisture on the canvas. Even uh, right here, I would just, you know, the hard edges, I will just remove and make sure there's no hard edges. Especially not, not, not right here. Also, what I normally do, and a lot of times on my underpainting, I will use, you know, other end of my brush and I'll define whatever and I need to define just recommendations. So let's say this will be my building, right? Something like this. Yeah. Just care. This is my, when this will dry, this will be my guidelines, kind of my drawing. So I'm recommending myself to to stick to it, kind of recommendation, recommendation to hints or whatever it called. And then here I will have this tree, right here branch this, this branch. Not too much because make sure when you, you know, they will leave the ditch in in the canvas. So make sure ah we forgot that this pole will be right here. I want this pole right here. I don't want it right now, I'll get it later on. And one pull, uh, probably right here to break this, or maybe on actual picture, you'll see that pole is straight uh, over the tree. So what we're trying to do, avoid this. I cannot put it right here, right? You wanna put it, actually, instead of putting it right here, I'm gonna call it, put it closer to break this. And it will be lower because you're doing this. This will be higher. So this will be my one pole and then another pole and maybe something. Something like this. This will work. All right. So this will be um, this will be all for today. <laughs> We've got part number one, part number two and part number three. Wow. <laughs> but overall, um, how you know what I'm looking right now <laughs> in the camera and uh, I have to fix this. So this will be dark part. I'll just remove that hard edge and push this down. Yeah. All right. So this will be my underpainting for this photo, which I will finish later, you know, later on, probably, you know, jump on this tomorrow. If you'd like to see uh, oil on top of uh, this acrylic, let me know in the description. Um, I may um, shoot a video, another episode, you know, just demo. All right, so this will be all for today. Uh, if you are interested in studying, please let me know. 
Uh, if you're just watching the videos and relaxing, great, cool. I love it. Uh, I love doing this uh, and I'm really enjoying doing this. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like, hit the bell and stay tuned because uh, a lot of videos are coming. Uh, I'm actually working on uh, composition, the importance of composition. All right. So and I will do actually the poll in YouTube. Uh, what would be next? Let me know. If you all to my channel or you already subscribed, you know my answer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for watching my videos and staying with me. Uh, I think we have a really great community. All right, so stay tuned and I will see you next time. Yeah.